Medic Mind. Motivate, mentor, maximize. Welcome to lesson eight, ratios. Often you'll get questions involving ratios and you'll need to set up and use ratios to answer a problem. A ratio helps us to compare the amounts of things. For example, to make a cake, you may need to mix two parts of flour to one part of sugar. This means that the ratio of flour to sugar is two to one. We can break things into parts. If a cake is two parts flour to one part sugar, then there are three parts two plus one altogether. Two thirds of the cake is flour, one third is sugar. If the mass of the mixture is 45 grams, one part is 15 grams, which equals one third. Here's another example. If a wooden chair is made up 20% by timber and 80% by forest wood, the ratio is one to four. There are five parts, one part timber and four parts forest wood. If the volume of the chair is 250 centimeters cubed, then one part is 50 centimeters cubed. When you form a ratio, you want to convert it to the simplest possible form. For example, if you make a ratio of 6 to 3, then you can convert this to 2 to 1 by inspection. For more complicated questions, it is harder to use inspection. So instead, use the highest common factor and divide each number by the highest common factor. For example, simplify 44 divided by 4 into the simplest possible ratio. 4 and 44 have a highest common factor of 4. So dividing each side by 11 gives us 11 to 1. When you are setting up ratios, you should have whole numbers on both sides. For example, if the ratio of milk to cheese in a pastry is 1.5 to 3.5, you should multiply both sides by two to get the ratio of three to seven. You can also estimate and round numbers to help set up a simple ratio. For example, there are one to five children in a year group 34 boys and 91 girls. Here, you can simplify the ratio of 34 to 91 to three to nine, and then on to one to three. Let's move on to some example questions. Have a go at this question. The answer is 6C. Here, there are eight parts in total, three plus four plus one. Three of these study maths, so three eighths study maths. There are 16 students in total, so multiply three eighths by 16 to get six students, C. Let's move on to question two. Have a go at this example. The answer is 14 over 41 A. There are 164 students. Check that the ratio adds up to this and you'll find that they do. Therefore, 56 are playing netball. 56 over 164 play netball. We need to simplify this fraction. So find the highest common factor, which is four. Divide top and bottom by four, which gives you 56 over 164 divided by four, which will give you 14 over 41. So 
Sometimes you will have ratio questions associated with maps. They will give you a scale on a map and you need to convert between real life distances and distances on a map and vice versa. Let's have a look at this example. The answer is B, 1.2 kilometers. First of all, bear in mind that the question gives you the distance in centimeters, but the question is actually in kilometers. The scale on the map is 1 to 20,000. Therefore, one centimeter on the map represents 20,000 centimeters. So, six centimeters on the map represents 120,000 centimeters. Remember, we now need to convert this to kilometers. So divide by 100,000, which gives 1.2 kilometers, which equals B. One thing to bear in mind, if you see many answer options separated by a factor of 10, there's likely to be a units trick present. Let's do yet another ratio question. The first two lines of information here are distractors to waste your time. The town hall measures two centimeters on the map and eight centimeters long. Remember from tutorial six, area questions, we learnt that it is better to convert to the final units before multiplying together dimensions. Two centimeters in the map equals 40,000 centimeters in real life, which equals 0 0.4 kilometers. Eight centimeters in the map equals 160,000 centimeters in real life, which equals 1.6 kilometers. If you can convert it later, you would have to remember that one kilometer squared equals 10,000 million centimeters squared. So it is easier to convert before in case you forget this. Also, as we said before, if answer options have values which are, which are a factor of 10 away from each other, such as A, B and E, then it is a strong hint that firstly, one of these is the correct answer and secondly, there is a unit trap that many candidates fall into. So be careful to make sure you don't fall into this trap. And finally, the final ratio question. Firstly, work out the area of the pool in the map. Here, we are working backwards as they have given us an area in real life. The area in real life is 44 meters squared. We should convert this to centimeters squared to prevent our numbers becoming too small when we scale down. Bear in mind that one meter squared equals 10,000 centimeters squared. So 44 meters squared equals 44,000 centimetres squared. The pool is therefore 44,000 centimetres squared in real life. The scale is 1 to 50,000. So do 44,000 divided by 50,000. Therefore, the area in the map is 0 0.88 centimetres squared. Now, convert this area to inches squared. We know that one metre equals 38.37 inches. So one centimeter equals 0 0.38 inches. And therefore, one centimeter squared equals 0 0.144 inches squared. Now, convert the 0 0.88 centimeter squared to get the final answer of 0 0.1271 inches squared, 
which is D. This is quite a tricky question with many steps. So if you overrun, you might want to flag and guess this question in the UK CAT exam. And just to reinforce, we converted the centimetres here throughout the question, even though there was no explicit need to do so. The reason we did so was because it made it easier to work with simpler numbers and it made sure we didn't have very big or very small numbers, which would especially be difficult to use with the UK CAT calculator. Thank you for watching this free Medic Mind tutorial. For £30, you can unlock all 150 tutorials in our online course. The course covers four full days of UK CAT teaching, as well as a course to help you with your personal statement and interview. You're free to ask as many questions as you'd like to our teachers, and with each tutorial, you can read along using our five UK CAT ebooks covering 500 pages of theory and questions to guide you every step of the way.